hospital visit. Yeah, they say she'll be okay. She's in good spirits. She liked the chocolate and the bear. Though she says she'd rather see you. Yeah, I know, I know. Tell Mom about the song. Right, the song. Yeah, I got the radio to play her song. She loved that. And now she's going to go to sleep. Visiting's almost up and she needs a rest. You'll be in tomorrow? Okay. So I think that was Harry, and the one in the hospital bed is obviously Cheryl. The bear was a present. That's the bear we saw Cheryl having in some other memories, and at the very beginning, the bear was in the car. It sounded like the mom was out of town or something, traveling in because of whatever accident happened with Cheryl. I guess just any digit for anything from the top 10. Let's do, uh, I don't know, number 7 from the top 10 list. Thanks for calling Alcamilla Radio. Your request has been selected for broadcast. Get well soon. And for the final digit, use the number of the tune you want from our top 10 list. Keep listening. As requested, here's a popular tune. Why is it coming from the left? That was weird. Oh. There's a list here, the top ten. Um, I selected... I don't even remember what number I selected. Uh, Rock and Rabbit, number seven. Um, and never again. Happy returns, up all night, my love for you, daddy's girl. Night driving. Well, we were just driving at night. Could be number one. Daddy's girl, probably it. Let's do number four, Daddy's girl. It worked. Um, I think we got a new voicemail that I accidentally X'd out of. She's fine. She's fine. She's going to be fine. I want to go visit, but he's doing a good enough job. Spoiling her, as you'd expect. Don't want to cast a cloud over it. No use getting her hopes up, you know? I'm just so glad she's okay. Yeah, it sounds like they're surprised that the dad's there. Like they're a deadbeat dad or they've been out of the picture for a while or something. But for whatever reason, I guess uh, maybe Harry was at the time the closest person to Cheryl. So that's why they're the first one to visit and that's why they said uh, the, like the mom will be flying in. we pass the monsters or I think we are I don't see any more blue open come on 
on. God, please open. Are you okay? You're not from the hospital. No. I had an accident. That yours? No. Uh, yes. <laughs> I'm not making any sense, am I? It's okay. Let's get you inside. You need help. I want to go home. I have medicine and gauze there. I'm a nurse. It's a few blocks north. I just need to rest. Well, I'm headed that way. Can you walk? Yeah, I'm feeling better. <sighs> Don't worry. Head wounds always bleed a lot. Lots of blood vessels close to the surface. It's nothing serious. I can clean up back in my place. Lisa. Lisa. I'm Harry. Harry Houdini. <laughs> Sorry. I'm always saying goofy things that come into my head. You think this Lisa will have a happier ending? I hope so. It's not so bad for Lisa in the original. But I was very satisfied when they dragged that asshole director of Alcamilla Hospital down to hell. It's not far to my apartment. We can jaywalk in this weather. Uh, yeah, hold on. Where did you say you were headed? Uh, home. My daughter went there after our accident. Huh. What happened? I crashed my car. And I don't know how long I was unconscious. When I woke up, Cheryl was gone. And she made it all this way? I know it doesn't quite add up. But there are things I can't piece together. But she called me. And then I spoke to someone else on the phone. There are times when things don't feel real. I feel like I'm losing my grasp on the truth of it. But other times, everything is fine. This feels real. Hey, <laughs> I'm as real as they come. Though, some patients mistake me for an angel. That's the medication. I'm real, and I've got the bags under my eyes to prove it. You been a nurse long? If you add up all the overtime, back-to-back 12-hour -back shifts, compared to a standard 9 to 5, I've been in the hospital for 40 human years. I've slept through half of it. Like tonight, fell asleep at the wheel. Not far now. You still feeling okay? Yeah. Fine. So tell me about your daughter. Cheryl? She's, uh... She's young, bright, happy. Likes collecting stuff, you know, bits and pieces, bugs. She loves bugs. Bugs? Like dirty, creepy bugs? No, no, butterflies, pretty bugs. She has a collection. Dead ones? Yeah. Still creepy. Not really. You seem to see the creepy in everything. Is that a nurse thing or just you? Definitely a nurse thing. We have a unique outlook on life. Whatever happened to Bedside Manor? We still got that. Seems like some bits of the dialogue don't quite finish, like there. Um, Lisa said we have that. Uh, comes with the... Or what was, I, I don't remember what I said at the end, but... They didn't say it, and they've done that quite a few times, but they don't quite finish the sentence. I don't know why that's happening. I'm not pressing anything. apartment is just around the corner. Used to belong to the super. It's a lot bigger than the others, but I only pay standard rent. The landlord has a thing for nurses. Grab a seat. I'm just gonna get out of these things. I oughta... Uh-uh, you're not running off yet. Warm up before you head back out there. I haven't thanked you yet. Five minutes. Come on, sit. Sit! Watch some TV if you want. 
I won't be long. This place is roomy. You know, last time I had a guy in my apartment, it was summer. During the heat wave. Now it's winter. Freaky early, but still. Time flies. Severe weather warning. Freak snowstorm hits small town of Silent Hill. You know, you're a nice guy, Harry. Thanks. I feel safe around you. You okay? <sighs> Headache. Be a hero. Fetch me some pills from the bathroom. Check the cabinet. Get me some yellow ones. Sure. See, I should get them as fast as possible because they're in pain, but I also want to check out the apartment, apartment just in case after I give them the pills, it, a cutscene happens and I don't have another opportunity. So I'm sorry, Lisa. Hang in there, don't die. How odd. A fridge. Diagonal in the corner. Yeah, look at those real-time reflections. Infinite chest. That's a hell of a ring, wow. Is that a bunch of diamonds? A diamond studded skull and crossbones? Totally normal, I'm just stealing Lisa's jewelry. <laughs> can I even, can I close the box? I can't. It's gonna be very obvious that I stole it immediately. Yellow ones? They're all the same color, none of them yellow. Uh. Oh, do I need to turn this upside down? <laughs> How many pills? <laughs> okay, I can't just pour out like a hundred. Well, those are yellow. What are these other colors? I'm wondering. No, what if I what if I push the yellow pills off? Come on, come on. Cooperate. Ah, oh, fine. Alright, well now I got them so I don't have to worry about the other ones. Come on! There we go. These are blue. <laughs> They're gonna come back to their cupboard and find their jewelry stolen and all their pill bottles just strewn all over the place. <laughs> I gotta know what all the colors are. I don't know why it's behaving so poorly. Why don't you want to turn easily? <laughs> oh, these are red. Alright, get out of here. <laughs> Green! Wow, you got some like rainbow pills. Okay. Self-medication. 
the one true perk of the healthcare profession. It's not just coffee that keeps us going 24-7. <laughs> okay, I'm going to sleep now. You let yourself out. You feel guilty about everything. When we all lived in huts and wore furs, we worried over the simple things. Food, water, whether animals would come and eat us in the night. Now we have supermarkets, bottled water, and 38 caliber home security. So what keeps us awake at night? More often than not, guilt. If only I had acted differently. If only I hadn't said that. If only I'd said something. You beat yourself up with your past. Don't blame yourself. Blame the world. Blame God. Blame me. Okay, this is my favorite. Let me introduce some friends of mine. This is King Harold. His daughter, the chaste Celestine. A prince called Wilhelm. And a bull. He doesn't have a name. Prince Wilhelm is passionately in love with Celestine, but she does not love him. One day, Wilhelm comes to the king and asks for Celestine's hand in marriage. Celestine begs the king not to marry her to Wilhelm, but the king ignores her pleas. Royal protocol means he must say yes to the match. They are married, and Wilhelm takes Celestine back with him to his kingdom. That night, he attempts to consummate the marriage, but the distraught Celestine flees. She runs from the safety of the castle and across a field, ignoring the sign which warns of danger. In that field is a bull, who, seeing the girl, charges her. She falls under his hooves and is killed instantly. What I want you to do is line the players up according to how guilty they are of Celestine's death. Whose fault was it? At the left, most culpable. To the right, most innocent. You want to hear that again? No. I think I'm ready. This therapist is f fucking weird, by the way, and terrible. Um, I think this is pretty easy, actually. Perfect. Uh, I didn't think they would hit each other so violently. All right, the bull is the least guilty. Um, princess is the next least guilty. Eh. Well, ah, uh, hold on. This might be harder than I thought. The question specifically is who's most guilty for the princess's death? Not who's, like, most guilty in general, but specific- Ah, fuck it. I'm just gonna go with what I was originally thinking. The bull's an animal. It's not guilty of anything. Uh, I hope that's enough. Um, you are the most guilty. You're a prick who tried to rape the princess. The king was hashtag just following orders, but still a piece of shit for making it happen. Um, yeah, something like this. There's a very, very wide gulf. The king is really close here, and you're really close over here. Done. Poor Wilhelm. You think if he really loved her, he would never have forced the marriage. I find the best cure for guilt is to never get caught in the first place. Let's continue. Yeah, this person's totally a serial killer or something. Jesus Christ. Best cure for guilt is never to get caught in the first place. That's exactly what you want to hear from your therapist. Sleep well, Lisa. Please don't die like you did in the original game.
My god, this place is a dump. Looks abandoned. Long abandoned. Out of order. Probably where I'm supposed to go. Is this locked or something then? Oh, can't even try to open it. And where exactly am I going? Up here? This is the very top of the map, so I guess. Yeah, I guess it's. Right here. Ooh, hello. Building superintendent. Uh... Something... Emergencies. Building superintendent. Sorry if I woke you. What can I do? I don't know. I guess. I don't know. Got a phone number. Almost inaudible, but uh, yeah, the experience sounds terrible. Why is it so quiet? The speech volume is all the way maxed. Whoa, this opens? Hold on, where does that go? I mean, that could be where I'm supposed to go. Huh, looks like I can also go this way. Which should take me to the Toluca Mall. The other door that I was going to take before is... I Think this one? Heads to the mall parking lot, or next to it, anyway? Not sure if it matters, or if they both lead to the same place, but... Let's go here. Ooh, there's an open window up there. Check over here first, though. Yeah, we're using the open window. <laughs> Golden Leaf Warehouse. What if they sell tea or something? Okay, well, I think this is a pretty good place to end the episode. So, I hope you've enjoyed so far. And when I return, we are going to head, I guess, further into the mall or wherever we have to go to get up here to 1008 Simmons Street.